What's up, Facebook? Who's ready to talk Legion for the next 30 to 45 minutes? Um, I know I am, so thank you for joining me. Um, I actually wanted to do this broadcast because um, we did it for my team and we're having some success in what we're doing in, in terms of optimizing our lead gen. I also did this for uh, Kyle Whistle's group out in San Diego. And if you don't know Kyle Whistle, uh, look him up. He has a team that does you know, $200 million annually. Um, they're very successful. And um, really I put together this class for my group because I wanted to, um, I wanted, I wanted to be able to really, I know as real estate agents, we don't have a lot of time um, in the day. Uh, so, and I know also that we need to prioritize our lead generation. Um, it is the most important thing we do every day, bar none. And so I wanted to come up with a good strategy for everybody, for all you guys out there in the struggle who, um, you know, who, who, who really wanted to be able to scale your business and do so through your lead generation. So um, that's why I put together this class. And um, really, I want to keep it very interactive. So, um, you know, I want you guys to ask questions. I'll try to answer all your questions. And uh, maybe I'll save some time also at the end um, to get to all of your questions. But like I said, I want to keep it very interactive. Um, hopefully, this will help um, a handful of you out there who are who are pounding the phones and um, who are really taking your lead generation seriously to um, start setting more appointments. Because what I'm about to tell you um, should make a, a, a definite, uh, immediate impact in, um, in your lead generation. So um, let me get to give you a, a little bit of a, a, a background on me um, is I've been, I've actually had a real estate license since 2002, but I've really only been full time into real estate since 2014. Um, in 2013, I was working for a company uh, in Cincinnati who had a small branch in Dayton selling copiers and printers. And I was absolutely miserable doing that. And um, so I, I, I knew I would get back into real estate. I just didn't know how and when. So in 2013, I started calling expired listings. And in 2014, I, um, I had 44 homes listed uh, calling expired listings. And so I quit my job that year, uh, went out and sold 57 houses, 81% uh, of which were expired listings. And then the second year went out and sold 104 houses. The third year went out and sold 189 houses. The fourth year sold 309 houses. And then last year we sold 222 houses. Uh, and almost, ex almost our business almost exclusively is, is represented by um, uh, just prospecting. Uh, and, and now we have, you know, different, we have different lead channels uh, in our business. I have a team now. We have 11 agents um, and, and most of us are crushing the phones uh, on a daily basis. And, you know, we all struggle with that. And so, um, you know, we, we struggle with it. It's I don't ever think it's a skill set issue. And I'm going to talk just a little bit about that before I get into the optimization piece, because for all of you who have taken the time to tune in and watch this today, um, you know, the, the, the most important thing is that you have your mindset right um, when you're doing your legion. And a lot of companies and a lot of coaches and gurus like you to think that it's a skill set problem. And frankly, I just don't buy that. Um, like I know that if your mother or your brother or your sister came up to you or your cousin or your grandfather and wanted to have a, a conversation about um, buying or selling a property that you'd be able to talk to them. Uh, it's just that sometimes we get in our own way. And um, when we're talking to total strangers and most of the time it's because we're not, it's because we haven't thought about why we're doing what we're doing. And so I don't, I'm not buying into that. It's a skill set problem. I think that, you know, society would like to have you believe that it's a skill set problem because they can package up really nice coaching programs and scripts and all kinds of things to sell you. Uh, whereas when you start talking about mindset, there's not, there's not a lot that they can sell you about that other than, you know, um, you know, 
maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching for that, but I digress. Um, so I want, I want to talk to you a little bit about the mindset piece and then we'll get more into the actual um, kind of day to day. So like the, the mindset piece, you really want to make sure that, you know, when you are, if you've decided to pick up the phone and make phone calls, you need to be dialed into why you're doing it. Right. And the reason why you're doing it is going to be different for everybody. You know what I mean? A lot of people, if your answer is money, it's the wrong answer. You need to go a little bit deeper. Um, also, you need to make sure that um, that when you're calling, that you're calling to to give something, not to get something because the consumer can hear that. Um, we've all heard the term commission breath and it, and it is true to a certain extent. But remember, at the end of the day, you're calling to give a service, right? You're not calling to get a commission. If you're calling to get a commission, you're not in alignment with who you are as a human being and you're, you're, you're gonna forget what to say, you're gonna be scared because that's not who we are as human beings. We are here to serve others, first and foremost. So remember that when you make that phone call, it should almost feel like an obligation to call and to be a servant. And that's how you have the proper mindset. Okay. So if there are any questions about mindset, I'm happy to answer those. Um, but I didn't want to spend up a whole bunch of time on mindset because I'm assuming that if you're here, then you are, you've at least taken that first step to having the right mindset to making prospecting a big part of your business and you should make it a part of your business because it is really the only way to scale a, a real estate business because we all know that dials equals contacts, contacts equals appointments, appointments equals contracts, right? And then contracts equals happy clients and hopefully a paycheck, right? So um, that being said, um, I've taken some notes here. I, I, I want to start off with um, with giving. So what this whole thing is about is, is it's really about optimizing the time you spend on the phones. Right. And some of this will some of this will be an aha for you. Some of this, hopefully, maybe you're already even doing. But um, the first thing you need to consider is is your lead sources. Right. So your lead sources are your expireds, your for sale by owners. Um, maybe you're on a team that provides you leads, right? Maybe you are, maybe you're a circle prospector, right? Maybe you load up a dialer and you, um, you, you, you call into a specific neighborhood, right? Um, there are all different kinds of lead sources. This, this one really is, is critical because it, it is, it will, it will determine there we have a gentleman in our office who just crushes the phone and he circle prospects right and essentially so you could give someone a phone book and you could say hey you know go find somebody who's looking to buy or sell right and it really doesn't phone books are free um information like that typically is is uh, of little cost and of little value but so if you optimize what essentially what internet buyer leads are is they're optimized Optimize leads, right? They're, you're getting someone that's signing up or registering on your website and they're saying, here's my name, my phone number, my email address, and here's you know what I'm looking for, right? So that is a step above calling people in a phone book. Um, for sell by owners, right? They, we know that when we call a for sell by owner that they've identified themselves as, hey, I wanna sell my house, right? And we also know that with expireds. So expireds are saying, hey, I want to sell my house and I want a realtor to help me, right? So these are all optimized lead sources. So an unoptimized lead source would be calling the phone book or neighborhood prospecting, right? Because when you think about making a call to an expired lead versus um, calling neighborhood prospecting calls, so or calling into a circle prospecting, then you, you think about for every dial you make, the opportunity for an appointment when you're calling expireds is much greater than if you were calling circle prospecting, right? So if you were just calling into a neighborhood asking if people wanted to sell their property. So that's the first way to optimize your dials is to make sure that, you, that the data you have is good and that the list you're calling um, would be uh, motivated buyers and sellers. Okay. So that's the first thing is, is, is optimizing your data. 
So the people that you actually call, right? And um, the second the second way to optimize your dialing time to set more appointments is, are you using a dialer, right? So hopefully everybody on this call uh, and watching this video, you understand what a what a dialer is. A dialer is you know is something that you can um, make multiple calls um, in 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 very little time. In other words, like I have, I we use a Mojo dialer, right? So Mojo, are, we also use Commissions Inc., which has a single line dialer. And essentially, what you do is you load your list up into the dialer and you select that list of people and then you cue the dialer. The dialer then dials your phone back, right? So it'll call your cell phone back and then you answer. And then what it does, the system just churns through all of your prospects, one after the other, so you don't have to, to peck dial your phone, right? And what does that do? That saves you time, right? So you don't, you, you don't, you don't have to call as many, you don't have to, it doesn't take you as long to call as many people. And another way to optimize that is when you um, when you're using Mojo, right? So Mojo is another way to actually optimize the dialing system. So we use a Mojo dialer, which allows us to call up to three 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 prospects at one time, right? So everything we do is about optimization, and this is this is really thinking about your business on a on a different level, right? And, and it's funny because we bring agents in sometimes. And, and in fact, we had a guy start from another real estate company um, last week and we brought him in and we started showing him all these tools. And he's like, oh, my gosh, he's like, you got this is nuts, guys. Like most people are not looking at this stuff. But I'll tell you, that's what the reason why we're selling more property is because we're we our business is optimized. In other words, we're 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 spending a little bit more money like we've invested in the business. We've invested in our agents because we have the best tools. And when we have the best tools, it allows us to connect with more consumers, right? So we have the best leads, right? We, we pay for lead, different lead sources for our agents. We have dialers for our agents, which in turn allows them to make more contacts because we, we know when we make more contacts that we set more appointments. And when we set more appointments, we write more offers, right? So everything is done with optimization in mind. Um, another thing, uh, so other than the dialer, um, and, and guys, these are things you can pay for. Like the the commit our commissions Inc. platform has a dialer that's built into it. I assume um, that Boomtown conversion have some sort of a dialer feature that's built in. Um, also, the the when we're, when we're using Mojo, so we're we're we have our Vulcan data is imported into Mojo. Um, and then that is a triple line dialer. We also have Vulcan 7, which provides a single line dialer as well. So Vulcan 7 is delivering all of our for, for sale by owner and expired data daily. And we're sending that to our team. We have different seats on, on some of these dialing systems so that our, our, our team can join onto the dialer. And, you know, we can make as many as 300 calls in an hour, right? So that's optimizing your lead generation. Um, another thing that I wrote on here too that I wanted to tell you guys about is are you calling at optimal times of the day, right? You guys have all hopefully by now seen this lead study. Um, and if you haven't seen the lead study, go to leadresponsemanagement.org and, um, and, and look through that, man, because that is imperative that if you know that you're spending time on lead generation every day, that you're calling at the most optimal times. And so you need to understand that when you're sitting down to make phone calls, that that you are calling either between the hours of eight and ten, or four and six, right? Because if you call during those times, those optimal times, then you're giving yourself the best opportunity to make a connection with a buyer or a seller, right? And you're 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 if you're not if you're not calling during those times, then you are your chances of connecting with the buyer or seller. While there's still an opportunity to connect, they're much lower, right? So we're calling at the optimal time. So your day might look like this, and this is what we talk to our agents about, is that you know first thing in the morning from eight to 10, that you are on the phones because we know during those optimal hours, we have the best opportunity to connect, right? And then from eight to 10, excuse me, from, from, uh, from 11 to four, 
you're running appointments, you are, you're doing all the, the reactive activities that your lead generation has created, right? Because when we make phone calls, what happens is we create, we create activity, right? So we create, we create follow-up activity. We, people are responding to us. We get emails. All this different stuff is happening. And it, it's, the, it's the cycle that drives the business. It's the gasoline that, that fires the engine. So, from, so your day might look like this. So eight to 10, you're prospecting. Four to six, you're prospecting. And then you're running appointments and doing everything else that you need to do between those hours, right? Because we wanna give ourselves the best opportunity connect, to connect with buyers and sellers. So remember that, and, and again, that, that URL, guys, is um, www.leadresponsemanagement.org. Check out that lead study there. There's more information, too, uh, on the best days to call, the best times to call, and uh, it's, just a, it's just a really cool, um, it's just a really neat tool uh, that you can use, you know, to help drive optimization in your business. Uh, another one that you want to look at is, um, is, is are you role playing? This one, I put this one on here last. I think it is important. I mean, practice makes perfect, right? We've all heard that cliche. And I, I do like the idea of role playing. Um, and I like the idea of role playing right before you, you get started on the phones. The, the only reason I, I'm a little reluctant to, to recommend role playing is because I, I feel like people use it as a crutch sometimes. In other words, they, they might say, oh, well, I didn't role play today, so I, you know, I can't make my prospecting calls. You know what I mean? And, and so while I think you should role play, I don't think you should use it as a reason not to do your lead generation. Role play will make you better, but being on the phones will make you better. In other words, making the calls and getting the experience will make you just as good as role playing. If you can find somebody to role play with, I think that's a great idea. Um, I got a question coming in. Sorry, sorry, I got a couple questions here and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll answer that. Thank you, Jay Kinder. Thank you, thank you. Um, so you suggest we call expires. There are a few, this is Liza King. Um, so you suggest call expires. There are a few to none now. So where do we get other forms of leads? Yeah, it's a great question. Liza, I would definitely recommend, um, and, and that is true also in our market, I would definitely recommend whatever lead source you're using, whether it be uh, Land Voice, um, Red X or Vulcan, go back, have them deliver the data for the last three years expired in your marketplace and load those into a dialer. Okay. I would definitely recommend doing that. And um, that's what we did. We have, I think we probably have five years worth of expired data in our Vulcan 7 platform right now. And we're calling those every day and we're getting appointments from those old leads, right? So, you know, these are leads that, that, that for whatever reason, they never got relisted. And now, you know, now that the market, the market is still strong where we're at. And so we're, 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 we're encouraging sellers to get back in the game, right? And we're listing those properties and selling them within days. Next question, Laura Crawford Blanchett. Who did you say you were getting the expired from? Uh, she said Red X, other than Red X and, 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 Laura, we're using Vulcan7, that's V-U-L-C-A-N, and the number 7.com. Um, we love Vulcan7. I've used Red X before. Um, I liked Red X as well. And I think the data varies in, into different marketplaces. Um, but Vulcan7's data in our marketplace is, is really, really good. We're collecting as many as five um, to seven phone numbers in some instances. Is all, we're also getting email addresses. So we like that because we're, we're using different channels to market to these people. So, um, so the last one I mentioned was role playing. Remember, I, I'm, I think it's important if you can grab a partner role play like 7.30 to eight or 7.15 to eight. I, I, uh, I love the idea of doing that, but I don't, don't use that as a, uh, an excuse not to make your dials, okay? Um, the next one I wanted to talk about is, um, is the three outcomes when you're making a phone call, okay? This one is really, really important. So I need, you, I want you to write this down. Hopefully you have a pen and a piece of paper. Write this one down. So there are three possible outcomes when you're doing lead generation, okay? There's only three. It's either a no, a not right now, or a yes, okay? And the reason why that's important is because 
most of you, most agents, in fact, are, are only, if they're not getting a yes, they're moving on to the next lead. And, and the only reason they're doing that is because they don't understand, they don't understand the probability of setting appointments. And here's, here's what I want you to understand is that only 11% only 11% of your appointments will come from your initial phone call. Only 11%. 87% of your, your appointments will come from every dial after that. And most conversions, just so you know, happen between dials 9 and 13. And most agents are giving up at dials 2, 3, and, and 4. M most agents are not making more than four phone calls when the reality of it is 87% of appointments are coming from you know, those, those dials nine to 13. So keep that in mind. Remember those three leads, the, 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 the three outcomes of a call. No, not yet. Right. So not yet looks like this. Not yet is, Hey, we're just browsing, right. Or, Hey, we're just getting an idea of what's going on in the market or yeah, we're moving. We're, we are moving there, uh, but it's going to be six months, right. Or, or, or we're, we're retiring from, you know, Tennessee to move to Ohio. I don't know if that ever happens. Probably not. It's most of the way it's most of the time it's the other way around. But you get you get you get the idea, and um, so so remember that. So and, and then remember the remember these numbers. So because what I'm going to talk about next, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. So remember these numbers: eleven percent come from your initial phone call. So eleven percent of your conversions to an appointment come from an initial phone call. Eighty-seven percent come from every dial after that. So don't don't give up after that first call, okay? Because you're selling yourself short if that's what you're doing. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, is classifying your leads. So ho hopefully you're using some sort of a CRM. Um, like hopefully we've made it that far, right? In this group, I'm I'm sure we are. Um, but r make sure that you're classifying your leads, okay? So not every system is the same, but I'm sure. Um, I'm sure that it is in some way, shape, or form similar to the same system that I use. Um, for those of you just joining us, um, I use Commissions Inc. for our buyer lead generation. Um, and then I also use Mojo. Um, but Mojo, so the way I use my dialer is that um, I call from four different lead categories, okay? So my four lead categories are um, new lead, nurture, attempted contact, and appointment set, okay? So I, I try to just simplify it as much as possible. And let me, let me share with you the reason why I do that. Because remember when I talked about 87% of your phone calls come from every dial after that initial dial is a lot of people that you call, you are not making contact with, right? And so I'm identifying those as an attempted contact. So what happens is when I sit down for my lead generation at eight o'clock every morning, the first leads I'm calling are my new leads, right? So new leads every day are new buyer lead registrations. They are for sale by owners. They are expired, right? The old, and, and remember what we talked about before is those are optimized leads, right? I wanna give myself, during those hours of eight to 10, I wanna give myself the best chance to set an appointment. So I'm gonna call the best leads, right? So remember, it's for sale by owners expires, new leads. For sale by owners expires, um, new buyer lead registrations, any new leads that have come in that day that you've not connected with, those you call first, okay? The second category I'm calling between eight and 10 is my nurtures. So nurtures come from that initial phone call, right? These are people, for those of you who don't know what a nurture is, a nurture is somebody you've made a connection with and you've identified a couple different things. You've identified their motivation to sell the property, right? You've identified also their timeline for wanting to sell. And then you've also identified any pertinent contact information and then search information, obviously, if they're searching for a property. So if you want to write those down, remember it's you've identified motivation, timeline, contact information, and if it's a buyer, any pertinent search information, right? You need those four things to follow up appropriately. So that can, that, that, if I have those four things, then I'm identifying that lead as the nurture, and then I'm following up accordingly, right? So categories I'm calling, 
First thing in the morning is new leads. I'm calling new leads, right? Expires for seven owners, new buyer lead registrations. And then I'm calling my nurtures. These are people I've talked to and identified a, a timeline. And then I'm following up according to that timeline. So those are the first two lead categories I'm calling. And then, and then the third lead category I'm calling is attempted contacts. So these are people in your database that you've consistently called and maybe have not reached. And what you're, the, the, the whole reason why you're calling your attempted contacts is to create more nurtures, right? Because 87% of your business, 87% of your appointments will come from nurtures. And so the way I have everything set up right now is in Commissions Inc., I have my new leads and I have my my nurtures. So all those are in Commissions Inc. And the reason why that is, is because I will take a little, I will, when I'm calling those leads, I call with a little more care and attention because again, those are optimized leads, right? Whereas I have all my attempted contacts in Mojo and that's the triple line dialer, right? And the reason why all of my, my attempted contacts are in Mojo is so that I can go through and call as many of those as possible in as short of time span as possible because I'm trying to create more nurtures to again optimize my lead generation from the Commissions Inc. platform. Okay, I hope all that makes sense. Again, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. And then the fourth category, of course, is our clients who you're currently working with who would be appointment set. Um, so, um, so remember that. So the, the four categories, if you need to write those down again, appointment set, nurture, attempted contact, and new leads, right? Um, another thing that I wrote down here too, and that I want you to not to discount, especially those of you who are listing properties, when you talk about prospecting, we've added in prospecting, a category into prospecting um, is our, our the people we already have listed. So the quickest way to a paycheck, especially in a seller's market, is to get price reductions, okay? And, and so make sure, guys, that you're, you're prospecting your own sellers, right? If you have listings right now that have been sitting on the market for more than 30 days, guys, you gotta reach out to your sellers and get price reductions, right? A price reduction is, is probably going to equal a paycheck much quicker than any other, um, any other phone call you could make, right? Because this property is already listed, it's already under contract. And you know, if you're in a seller's market and you price it appropriately, that it's probably going to sell. So uh, make sure you're adding in your sellers as one of your prospecting categories, okay? Um, and the other thing that, that really is important that I think you should know, we're, we're really diving in, into this on our team right now, is knowing your numbers, right? I cannot, I cannot share with you, um, I cannot express how important it is to actually know your numbers. There's so much power in knowing your numbers because, you know, if, if people who don't know their numbers, and let's say, let's say you're laying a zero, right, for the month of March right now, and we're, we're three weeks in, this, this is our last week, our last full week of March, but you're, you're laying a zero, and you don't know your numbers. Well, you don't know how many calls you need to make in order to set the number of appointments you need in order to write the number of contracts you need, right? So there's so much power in knowing that if you make 200 phone calls, that you're gonna get a hold of 40 people and you're gonna set four appointments and from those four appointments, you're gonna get one sale, right? Because then you know if you have a specific goal, then you know you need to make X number of dials because X number of dials equals X number of appointments and X number of appointments or X number, so many dials equals so many contacts equals so many appointments equals so many sales, right? That's where the power is in, in lead generation. So make sure the last thing I, I want to touch on is just knowing, make sure you know your numbers. And even if you're just getting started, you can do this. This is something you can do on a weekly basis is just knowing your numbers. Start recording it, right? We use a dial sheet like this right here. See this? Set, see, I don't know if you can see that, but see that says dials, contacts, nurtures, appointments, lender referrals, and any tasks that I have for today, right? And so I'm taking this data, and then we have a master spreadsheet in the Google Drive that we're recording all this on. And like, so 
I have a spreadsheet right now for all of our agents where I can tell, I can, I can sit down with my agents in a one-on-one -on -one environment and tell them exactly how many dials they need to make in order to get their appointments in order to hit their, you know, uh, contract goal, right? Because I sit, every time we meet, we bring an agent in here, we sit them down and we, we don't set their goals for them. We have them set their goals with us. And so we may bring an agent in and they say, Mike, I want to make $100,000 next year, right? And so what we do is we, break, we, we, we have an economic model and we work that out backwards. And we say, okay, so based on $100,000, you know, you need to be on five appointments a week uh, based on, you know, uh, $175,000 average price point, right? And 40% and of your business is, is from buyers and 60% is from sellers, right? And so we break that all the way down to the number of dials they need to make on a daily basis. And it provides them a, a complete uh, a roadmap for them to hit their number. It is the, guys, listen, it is the most powerful thing in the world when you can sit down and show somebody a roadmap to a hundred grand, right? Or whatever their goal is. Because most, most companies are hiring in real estate agents and they're, they don't take the time or, or even care to take the time to sit people down and figure out what their goals are. And so, you know, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, just really quickly here at the end, um, please let me know. Go ahead and comment on the side if you have any questions. Um, I, I'm happy to, 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 you know, to jump on a call with anybody as well to tell you, you know, kind of uh, maybe in more detail about what we're doing. And, you know, we're always looking for people to, to, to join our team. So any agents who are watching this that are in Cincinnati um, or, or, or the Dayton or Columbus markets, uh, we are open to having a conversation with you uh, right now. We're generating close to a thousand leads per month, unique buyer registrations every month. Um, actually, some of, about 30 percent of those are sellers as well. So and then we're we're we're, we're totally we're taking agents. We're taking new agents. We're taking existing agents with with bad habits. And, and we are we are we're 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 developing them into um, elite level agents who are just going out and crushing it right now. So I'll leave it open for some questions for you guys. Um, certainly, like I said, I, I'm happy to, to stay on here for a while. And um, if you want to schedule a, a call one-on-one -on -one with me, feel free to go to meetmikewall.com. That's M-E-E-T-M-I-K-E-W-A-L-L.com and schedule some time with me. Uh, but if I don't have any questions here, and I don't think we do, uh, which means uh, I've been fairly thorough. And so for that, I am... I am uh, I'm very happy, and uh, I appreciate to all of you who 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 decided to hang in there with me and um, who take lead generation as as seriously as I do, and are truly um, who are truly committed to creating a business through prospecting. So, um, if there's no questions, then um, I'm out. Thank you.